Not, not clawed. Not no, clawed. we had a. It was a pony bite. Oh. Whoa. It wasn't bad at all. So, how, in this camp, roughly how many men were there? 500, I think. 500? And how many Brit were Brits and how many were Aussies? Oh, there was only one out of Aussies, the rest were bombs. Yeah, so yeah. how many Aussies were there? There was like four of you, or from the second, fourth? I think there might have been a because there's a crowd from Tassie, there was a Queensland mob, and there was some from New South Wales. Yeah, do you remember any? Victoria. Do you remember any names? Yeah. Oh yeah, I know. quite a few. Yeah. Uh, well, there's no uh, but that from Tassie. Yeah. Dull Edwards. And there was oh, quite a few Jimmy Flower and a few other blokes from. Uh, oh. I can't remember the name there. From Victoria, and then there was Cole Furborn. He was from, uh, uh, what was it, De Grone. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, now, he was a sergeant, wasn't he? Yeah. Second 20th Battalion, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Jeff De Grone. Yes. And uh, he was a funny queer bloke. Anyway, I'm in constant. Uh, uh, correspondence with his daughter. Fran. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I just got a letter from her at Christmas time. Marvellous. That's yeah. good. Yeah. yeah, Fran, she, uh, uh -huh. she came over here. Yes. And she stayed with us overnight. Yeah. And uh, she took a big recording of all our exploits and one thing. Yeah. Like that. Well, she also visited Dorothy Clancy, didn't she? She did. Yes. Yeah. While she was over. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, she's going to write a book about it all. Uh, well, she's already got something on the internet. Yeah. 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 yeah, she keeps in touch with my son and his daughter yes. uh, and his wife in Jordan. Yes. Because they are on the computer. computer. We're yeah. not. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, is, were you in Conan when the war ended? Yeah. And when did you first know that the war was over? Well, we got an inkling something was wrong because we were taken off the furnaces. Mm. Okay? And we said, why are we taken off the furnaces? And they said, oh, they've broken down and they've got to be repaired. Well, we used to do all the repairing under the Japs, oh. they, they, you know, we had to be there to do to do the various lifting and all that sort of oh. stuff. So that didn't wash. Oh. And then we uh, could hear these bombers going over, oh. Oh. and we said, oh, something's on. And anyway, the and they doubled up their guard all around the fence. And uh, uh, we didn't do any work, we were in the camp. And anyway, a few of us allocated jobs, and I, my job, uh, one I was allocated to for the day was to uh, get the uh, food from the Japanese line. You had to get it every day. They allocated what you were getting. It was just after lunch. And I was going through the gate into the Japanese compound to get it. And a Korean workman stuck me up. They'd been working in the ground, digging a well of some sort. Anyway, he said to me, sense or worry, get them down. The war is over, get them down. I said, Nanika? He said, sense or worry? nip on down. So I went back and I got a bloke from Queensland, uh, a loop, and I told him. He said, oh, I'll go to have a talk to him, because he could, we couldn't. Right? 
So then I went on further down the Japanese line, my past the main office, and here's the camp commandant, he's had his hands on his desk, crying his heart out. Yes. See, I thought, well, that's good enough for me. You know. Anyway, I got the rations and I went back and I told them all. And uh, uh, we said, oh, well, I'll just have to wait and see what happens. And anyway, uh, we, oh, what happened then? Oh, yeah, we, we had a day. Nobody said a word, nothing to do, and uh, we all sort of felt it. Anyway, uh, next night, we thought, well, we've got to get a radio of some sort. We've got to find a radio. And there was a, a, we had to pick out two little blokes to go out because there was only a whole defence about this big where the slush from the, there was a pig pen in there and uh, the Japs used to share that with us whenever there was a pig growing up enough. So we said now, go out and get uh, a radio from somewhere, you know if you can. But don't drink any of the bloody uh, rice brandy. It'll kill you. Anyway. Previous to this though, the, the Koreans started the circle around our fence. And they said, they want our clothes. They were wrapped up in brown, in uh, brown paper, anything they could get, they, and they give us chooks and tomatoes, oh. and said, "Yeah, so, so we all that's good enough for us." Anyway, these blokes, <laughs> two blokes went out, and they got through the pig pen and down through the hole. While we kept guard, there was two guards on duty, and they were going this way and that way. So when they you know, so about midnight there's a hell of an uproar and these two blokes are trying to get through the fence to as drunk as monkeys. And they got a radio. Anyway, we switched the radio on and we got uh, the island of Guam. And it was the Yanks. And they were saying that they were going to deliver by uh, goods and clothes and food and everything. Mm -hmm. But they had to know where we were. Mm -hmm. And uh, we said, oh, well, we'll just wait and see. Anyway, they came over the first time and our quarters just look like any other building in the town. Mm -hmm. uh, around, we were about two miles out of Coman. Mm -hmm. uh, it just looked like everything else. Mm -hmm. And they 